Hey everybody, welcome to ASG Astronomy. Uh, today I want to walk through how to actually adjust for tilt and back focus and once you get a photon cage uh, and get your tilt device set up on your scope, how do you actually process that with software and get that tilt um, perfect? And the software has really evolved in the last uh, couple of years, uh, even in the last year or few months. It's really changed how you can adjust tilt. And so I want to walk through that process. It's uh, It can be really elaborate. I want to not talk too much. Um, I want to try to be as brief as possible. Uh, but I want to give enough detail to really show you uh, one that it's really doing a good job of tilting and also some of the finer details that you really want to look at if you're at the level of really adjusting for tilt and those those stars in the corners you're probably going to want some of this um, some of this detail as you do it now I'll try to be brief um, and try to cover this. This might be a video that you have to watch a couple of times if we breeze over something really quick. Uh, you might have to go back and check it out. Um, so let's take a look here. Uh, the software that most people have used in the past is CCD Inspector uh, or ASTAP. ASTAP is free. CCD Inspector's um, I think it's 150 or $200. It's something like that. Uh, it's a great piece of software too um, and what they do is they check single images and so let's take a look at what this does uh, this is uh, something you can just download uh, you just grab a, a frame uh, or an image <clears throat> and something that's in focus and you want to have a starry field something with not a lot of nebula in it I like to shoot in the Milky Way but away from anything just a really dense star field that's pretty consistent I think that's really key here because it needs to it needs to really get um, all corners and center points and, and and to do its calculation and actually figure out if things are tilted or curved. So I just grab an image here. Uh, it's just a fit file. I'll just throw it in here. You can see that uh, it's linear. It's non-stretched. And all you have to do here is just hit F4 in a step and it'll go through and calculate out um, all of the HFDs or the half flux diameters of your your stars and it can use HFDs HFRs it can use you know FWHDs or whatever you need to calculate um, your your stars uh, essentially what you're looking for is uh, one you're looking for this square to be nice and flat but you can see there's tilt here um, it shows you down here at the bottom tilt 12% mild tilt um, and you can see the right hand side there are 3.85s and over here is 4s so there's definitely some tilt uh, you can also see your off axis aberration which is uh, curvature and you can see it's 0.5 and I like to see that down more in the you know 0.10 to 0.2 range um, so there's there's a lot of curvature here but there is also a lot of tilt and <clears throat> when you look at these single images it can be really hard to tell which way do you need to tilt it um, is it is it towards you is it away from you um, a lot of times this takes some trial and error so you go take a picture you, you put it in here you retilt things you adjust some screws you take another picture you drag it into here it can be a long process and I've spent sometimes I've spent two hours trying to get tilt out of this uh, fixed uh, before I finally am happy with it so this is kind of the old process of doing it uh, it works uh, this is free software uh, so let's take a look at a newer method uh, this is Nina, and if you've never used uh, nighttime imaging software, this is used for capturing, it's used for sequences, it's used for controlling observatories and domes. Um, there's a lot of other software out there, but this one has a really kind of cutting edge uh, focusing system called Hocus Focus. And Hocus Focus has some built in um, aberration inspector tools that we like because it actually will measure corners for us which is exactly what we need for tilt okay so if you've never used Nina I would encourage you to grab it it's it's a free download donate to these guys they put in so much work to it um, and then if you go to plugins uh, you can search for available plugins and they've got a lot of them coming in here one of them is Hocus Focus and George here has done a great job with this. 
I've uh, talked to him a few times um, on Slack, and it's really impressive software. Um, not only does it focus uh, while you're using uh, Nina, but it also has some other tools we want. And so uh, get this first installed, and when you do, and you come to your imaging panel, uh, you're going to see a couple of uh, new tabs in here, Aberration Inspector being one of them. Okay. Now if you don't see it, you can come up here to the top tools in the top corner, and this turns that panel on and off. And so you can make sure it's turned on. And this is going to do a detailed analysis. It's going to actually run a focusing curve. And so you're not just going to be looking at a single image here. It's actually going to look at a curve image. Um, and uh, that's going to give us how much tilt is off. We've never had that actual measurement before. Uh, so let's take a look here. Uh, the great part about Hocus Focus is I can actually load saved autofocuses. So. I've got a few runs here I'm going to show you that's pretty typical of what I do. So uh, this would be the first attempt um, of, a, of a system with a photon cage. I just slapped it on the front of a Raza. I haven't tilted it or anything. And I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And this is going to go ahead and do an autofocus curve. Okay, now each of these is a focus, so again, it's running a regular curve. <clears throat> the thing you're going to notice here is it actually has your top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right corners. So it's actually giving you measurements not just for the center, but for each individual point. And as I zoom out here, we can see our curve is off quite a bit you want these to line up exactly the same and across this center point. That means all four corners are exactly in focus with your center. And that means you have no tilt and you have minimal curvature. Okay, So you can see here this is a problem um, light curve that I have, a, a focus curve. And so if we scroll down through here, once it's done running, it's going to give you some really good analysis data. Uh, it's going to give you right here uh, your focuser position. Where is your actual top left, right, bottom left, bottom right focusing position at? And it does that by looking at that curve and you can see they're all in different spots. It's going to tell you how many adjustment steps on your focuser you need to uh, adjust. And it's going to tell you down at the micron level how much uh, you're out of focus or <clears throat> how much tilt is in that corner uh, in in microns so it's very very precise too the other cool features this has in it is it gives you your history so when you get done running a curve you don't have to for example on a static image like this write everything down uh, it's gonna actually let you look at this history which is great because you can see your changes instantly uh, as you scroll down here, it gives you kind of a contour map as well as a eccentricity of where your stars are egg-shaped and in which direction. And you can see some of these right in here, these darker green, smaller ones. Those are really good um, stars. Whereas out here on this right side and this left side, they're starting to get really elongated. And so it shows you um, kind of which direction and what's going on. That's very helpful information as well. It also gives you this uh, 3D uh, graph. Uh, it can be a little bit challenging to read. You got to kind of look at it um, which way you need to go. It tells you the telescopes up here, the sensors down here, and so you can see these red points are too close. Uh, these blue points on your sensor are are too far away. So, what do we do here? Um, you know what does all this mean and <clears throat> really what you're gonna look at when you run this is these curves we want to get them to line up just right and the first thing you'll look at is how much do you need to adjust okay how many microns and you might be saying well how do you figure out how many microns how does it know your adjustment steps and this is a very important piece, I think, for this tool to work properly is to actually get the right input. So let's come back up here to the top and you'll notice there is an options tab. OK, 
okay uh, this is going to tell you how many steps do you want to run on each side okay and I have it set at four uh, it tells you your step side size and that's going to depend on your focuser um, your electronic focuser that you have now I did a little research on this and uh, for example I believe a Celestron e-focuser it does uh, a thousand steps per revolution and I also looked at the ZWO, the little red cube um, electronic focuser and it runs I think around 5600 steps per revolution so it's much more precise and that's pretty critical because it, it, it'll change how many steps you take here for example I have a EAF a ZWO red one here it takes 300 steps for me to actually start to see big changes and that's because that thing has over 5,000 steps per revolution if I'm going to use a Celestron focuser I need to know how many steps it is because I might bump that down you might run something like 100 or 80 um, because you know that that would be a big jump for that focuser and so that's the first thing to look at um, you know make sure you can get good curves before you even start and for me 300 steps with the um, ZWO and this is on a Raza 11 so the next thing you have to figure out and this is I think the most critical part is your focuser step size and I believe this just defaults to one and if you're not really concerned with how many steps you're just going to look at kind of the ratio um, then this might be something you can skip but I went ahead and did a little more research on this piece too and for my scope which is a Raza 11 it is a one millimeter per turn um, focuser and I'm not sure if they run that across all the Celestrons. I'd have to go back and look. I don't know if the Raza 8 is a one-to-one. -one, uh, but you need to know how what's the pitch of your uh, focuser on your scope. And you can hard measure it, or you can actually just contact your, uh, your scope manufacturer and ask them. I contacted Celestron, and they said it's a one millimeter uh, per revolution. And then I looked it up in their documentation and actually had that in there. So <clears throat> if you take your, uh, you know, your your scope, or I mean your focuser, and let's say I have this ZWO that has 5,600 steps uh, per millimeter, uh, that's pretty crazy. But I can, you know, divide that out and I'm getting down to about 0.17 microns uh, per step size okay so you want to be able to calculate that uh, it just depends on what uh, what focuser and what telescope you have uh, in order to figure out your focuser step size okay so once you have that this will actually give you really accurate adjustments Okay, I can see that I'm, you know, 28 microns off in the top right corner, and it needs to go in a negative direction. Okay, now Nina gives you right here positive values move away from objective. So if it's positive, I need to actually move my camera away in that corner. And if it's negative, I need to take my camera and move it closer in that corner. So that tells you which direction to turn the screws it tells you which corner to turn the screws and it tells you how much to turn the screws so outside of using a photon cage where you've got four corner tilting and you've got a tool like this <clears throat> you know it's it's really the best option to uh, to to use this we now have hard data rather than something like this which we used to use and you kinda start guessing and it's kind of a trial and error process so this uh, I think is really an invaluable tool and with it you can uh, I usually can adjust my tilt from terrible tilt to you know no tilt or two or three percent tilt uh, within 15 20 minutes and I can usually do it in about four or five adjustments so you might be asking okay well I'm you know 25 microns off I'm 19 microns off how much is that 
um, on a photon cage. So <clears throat> if we do a little bit of math on that, okay, uh, <clears throat> we use uh, four corner really micro adjusters that are 120 uh, threads per inch. So if you do the math on that, let me pull up a calculator. Okay, and each inch has uh, 25.4 millimeters. So if you take 25.4 millimeters and, and divide that by 120 threads, each turn or one revolution of our adjuster is going to be 211 microns. Okay, so a micron is just a thousand of these guys. So uh, if we take um, 211 or let's just say 212 that's how many microns one turn of the photon cage adjuster is going to turn you can see well we need you know 28 or 24 so if I just divide this by 4 that's a quarter turn I'm at 53 so really what we're looking at here is about an eighth of a turn to do these Okay, that's not very much, and we're talking microns here, which is very small amounts. Um, you know, the human, just to give you a comparison, a human hair is 70 microns. A, uh, a, a, a red blood cell, I believe, is about 25 microns. So you, you're talking about specs here um, of adjustments. And you can see when we ran it, though, it, it did show... Um, the stars being out. Now this is at an F2 telescope so it's very fast, it's very sensitive um, to these adjustments and that critical focus area is very very small. In fact I believe it's about six and a half microns. So <clears throat> let's take a look at this again. Now uh, we know our curves off, we know we need to adjust these corners so I might give these guys a little eighth inch turn okay, and there's another piece on here that says show sensor model and if we turn that on okay it's going to give us a different view and we can turn this 3d view on and off the critical focus zone is this gray area we really want the whole image to be gray that means we're flat and as we scroll down it gives us way more detail here Okay. It shows we're shooting at f2.2 on a ROS 11. Our focus step size is that 0.17 microns. Our critical focus is 6.5 microns. So in order to get in here, everything needs to be within 6.5 microns. Okay. It also shows you a really good stat right here called curvature. In curvature radius, think of this as the radius of a big giant beach ball. Okay, and uh, you know the bigger the beach ball, the flatter that little tiny area is going to be that the sensor sits on. If you have a, the size a, a round ball the size of a volleyball, that curvature is really sharp, and we don't want that. So you're going to look at this curvature rate radius and try to get this number as big as possible. Um, it also gives you some really good tools down here whether or not you're you got a good fit how your curvature is um, your tilt so on and so forth so you can use this information same thing it's got your contour map and your eccentricity um, so let's go ahead and run this again after we make those adjustments again I would look at this and say okay what does it need I need to go to these corners this top left one I would adjust these two I would take this in an eighth of a turn, or I mean push this away, it needs to be added, so I need that sensor to go away, so that corner, bottom left, I would actually screw in. Now, <clears throat> let me show you the photon cage here. Uh, instead of me jumping back and forth on a real one, I'll just pull this up. Now, <clears throat> these screws, you've got four tilt screws in this area, okay, and these big screws don't do anything. Uh, they just lock it in place. So these are the fine, the small ones, these little two millimeter um, hex screws are the fine adjusters and you'll see that when you have it. So what you do is I go around, I just grab all these big ones and I unlock them. I take a quarter turn, unlock all of them so the whole thing can move and then I would take this and adjust it. Now this slit is always the top of your image so this one would be the top left, this would be top right, 
this would be bottom left and the back side would be bottom right. So you always know where to tilt from because this little slit on a ZWO is going to have a little black desiccant port and this is going to be the middle of your image, top middle. So if we jump back over here to Nina, okay, we know top right needs to be minus 38. So if we jump back over to our device, this is top right over here and it needs to be minus 38 so the sensor needs to come closer so what you do is again unlock all four of these and then this screw needs to be backed out an eighth of a turn okay and then the other one is the bottom left it needs to be added 23 so we jump back over here this is bottom left and I would screw this in an eighth of a turn and then I would I would screw all these four down again just real lightly just nothing has to be torqued hard at all just super light and that would give me an adjustment and then I would go ahead and run our curve again just run another focus so let's do that let's go back up here we'll just load another one I'll jump down a little bit further this was two runs later Or one run later sorry and this one looks like it had kind of a bad take in the middle of it okay so it's all done doing its calculations we come down here and see how close we got just by those one uh, couple adjustments. You can see my top right went from that 23 or 24 down to 8 and same with the bottom left. So we still have room to improve uh, but we were headed in the right direction. You can see our sensor still shows it's off quite a bit and if we come down here you'll notice uh, our stars aren't quite as bad. They're starting to all get a little bit smoother uh, but there's a lot of room to improve here. Okay. So again, I would run through this again. I, I see what I need to adjust. Uh, we're talking, you know, eight and six microns. So we're talking little tiny tweaks of the uh, adjustment screws. This is not a quarter adjustment. This is a tiny little squeak, like maybe in a sixteenth of a turn. Okay. So we would go back. We would make those adjustments on those two. Um, uh, screws again I would undo all the four locking screws and then I would just grab these which are the tilters these fines and I would just do two of them just to see if I could give them a smidgen like a sixteenth and then I would lock all four back down and let's go ahead and run another one so I'll jump in here uh, let me just jump one more down here I'll skip one so it doesn't take too long <clears throat> okay we can see our curves are starting to all fall in sync and that is one thing we really are looking for that's that's uh that's a good sign that your curves are starting to work uh, i don't think that ran let me go try it one more time. I think that ran the same one again. And we really want those lines to line up down here especially. Okay. All right, and if we zoom in here, it'll actually show you when you're in focus how close these guys are getting. This is down here at the bottom is your focuser steps, and these are your uh, measurements. And so you can see these all four corners and the center are getting very close in terms of measurements. And if we scroll down, yeah, look at this. Um, our microns are within two microns. I mean, we're talking a very, very small amount. I don't. I don't think I could get this any better at this point. Um, to me, that's 
as flat as you're going to get um, with an image. You know, you could keep tweaking it, but we're talking, you know, uh, a, a fraction the size of a human cell. So, you know, your inners are, are 2.15, your outers are 2.17. That's, that's a very flat image. And if we come up here and show the sensor model, uh, you can see how flat we've got. This is a very um, gray. That's that's very flat. We're we're within this this very nice critical focus zone. Now I'm I'm working at an f ratio of f 2.2 on a ROS 11, and so my critical focus zone is literally six microns. Um, it could be actually opened up. I think maybe a bit more, like maybe 10 microns. But I know I know how they're calculating this, and they have it running at six microns, which is very tight. So even though I have really good tilt, this thing is showing my tilt is off a little bit by 2.9 microns. In order to be within that and check that box, I got to be within you know 25% of that. Uh, I'm not quite there, but you're going to find out the stars look really good at this point. Okay, uh, your curvature is pretty big. If you calculate that out, you know it's a pretty big, um, large area. If we come down here, we can look at some more data and see that we're just a few microns off. So you could keep tweaking it. If we look at our eccentricity down here, you notice all these stars are kind of all leaning the same way um, and the same size, and that's a good signal um, when they're small like this. Uh, yeah, I might have guiding errors here. This might be something else more mount related. Um, and so, you know, another good good idea here is to actually just flip over to your image. So here's my starred image. Um, you can actually use the aberration inspector. And when you look at this, you know, do you have round stars? And to me, those are much better. I mean, I'm seeing really good stars in all these panels and I'm happy at that point. So to me that's a good uh, indication that you have uh, fixed your tilt. Uh, but we can jump back over here again and look at some of this data just to prove what it's doing here. Our curves uh, have gotten uh, very similar. Um, maybe a little bit more room to improve if you wanted to really keep tweaking. Uh, this gives you back focus errors five microns move sensor towards the flattener so if you wanted to start adjusting some back focus you could um, let me open my device here again so back focus we give you independent back focus so if you have this really tilted good you may not want to touch these tilters anymore um, you could screw these all in in the same amount but we're talking like fractions and I just would rather not touch those so what you can do with our back focus system is you loosen this bottom screw right here this clamp ring and that's gonna free up the uh, clamping of your camera you'll leave the top one and what you can do is the same thing with push-pull screws up here you can take these three big ones loosen them up and then these little guys are your actual back focusers and so these are 0.5 threads so a whole turn is 0.5 millimeters now this thing's off a of micro like 0.5 or 5 microns remember so I wouldn't even adjust this to me this is fine but if you want to you could adjust these like give them a little squeak a little tiny turn you know 1 32nd and then lock down your big screws again and then lock your clamp ring and that way you can move your camera up and down and adjust back focus and not touch these tilters. Uh, I will say that honestly I think if you adjust the back focus you may knock the tilt off slightly just from inherent movement in the device. Um, I mean we're talking such tiny amounts um, so you might have to run through and do tilt just one more time to really verify that. So again I wouldn't worry about this if it's that close but if you see your curves way off and it really wants you to move that you can adjust the back focus as well so um, a good tool and then I always visually verify this now we could go back to just to double check let's just run this on the old method okay uh, so we've, we've 
done this. I think this is one of these lower images here. Let me try one of these images that after we've tilted, what does it look like in ASTAP? So I just drag my image in here, open it up, and I hit F4. And we take a look. Uh, it says tilt is 3% none. Um, and off axis aberrations is 0.13. I like to see that, you know, down in the teens like that. That means it's really flat. <clears throat> and 3% tilt, I'm happy with that. I mean, these, these numbers all look very similar across across the board um, and very close to the middle. Again, you could keep tweaking just a little bit if you want to. Um, but this just kind of verifies, again, another tool doing just static measurements on an image um, if you wanted to. But I think I think everybody's going to want to learn this Nina and Hocus Focus system. I think people will want to dive into this aberration inspector. It's actually giving you hard value in measurements and it tells you which way to go. And like I said, there's some really good information here. You got your history. Uh, it keeps that for you. Uh, it also has um, some sensor modeling like this. It shows you some different views either in 3D or in uh, a flat view. It gives you some you know some some suggestions to do. I wouldn't I wouldn't stick to these as hard values, but they're definitely helpful. Um, in getting you going in the right direction. Uh, again, I think you might have to spend some time setting this up. I, th I think this focuser step size is, is important. I like to see it be accurate. And of course, you're going to want to make sure you've got a good step size and that you can run, uh, before you even start this, that you can run good focus curves um, and get those so they're not all jumpy and jagged. And so you just come in here and you can run an autofocus using this button and it'll run through and give you all this data. Okay, so that's how we would actually adjust and use the photon cage. Hopefully, I know this is about 30 minutes. Um, it's a little bit long, but it's a pretty complex tool. And I think uh, in the right hands, if you're at this step and you're using this, um, you're gonna wanna you're going to want to understand maybe what some of this data is giving you, how to use it, and then how to incorporate that into a physical device like this um, so you don't you know, spend a lot of time jumping around just guessing. Um, it's not guessing anymore. We now have hard measurements and can actually move things exactly where we want. So hopefully that's helpful, and hopefully this tool is helpful. So thanks again for watching, and we'll see you.